All right, it's Thursday. That means Dr. Joe is here to answer questions about your pet. So if you have a problem with your pet, you can give us a call. The number is 918-460-KJRH. And today, Dr. Joe has brought along Ozzy. Ozzy. Good yeah. morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Well, tell us about Ozzy. Well, Ozzy is uh, just a little dog here. And actually, he's, he's uh, about 13 weeks old. So he's not growing particularly fast. Although when you look at him, you, you think, oh, he looked like a big dog here. And um, <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of approximating with you that he'd be about 50 pounds. Or so, but he's really okay, we've so had a medium him, sized dog. Yeah, we've had him quite a long time. He 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 was kind of abandoned and a little roughed up a little bit, but he's doing great here. Someone asked me what kind of breed he is, and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> he does look like a tough one to yeah. figure out, doesn't yeah, he? There's 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 a lot in there. His hair coat, if <laughs> he's you know, a lot going on. Yeah, it really is very 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 short. It kind of reminds me of there's some Sharpe in there somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, although he's far from any any type of you know <laughs> wrinkly skin and stuff. But his so hair coat be a big is real short. No, actually not not. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. So, Where can uh, folks uh, find Ozzy? He's over at Heritage, uh, which is uh, 627-8575, or he's AnimalAid.org on the net. Easy enough. All right, let's get to the phones. And first up, we have Gail in Tulsa. Good morning, Gail. Hi. Good morning. What's your question? I would like to find out. We have been told uh, we have a 13-year-old Chihuahua, and mm -hmm. they tell us now we have to have a heartworm test before she can before they will give us our heartworm medicine for her? Yeah, a lot of times I'll tell people that uh, it's good to know the heartworm status. 13 years old, yeah, you're getting up there a little bit. I think that's maybe what you're getting at. Um, and I don't know what kind of kind of shape it's in. What can happen sometimes is if, if some of this stuff will start killing the heartworms, and if they have heartworms, they can have a reaction. Most of the time, uh, you want to talk to your veterinarian about that a little bit. Sometimes, you know, there's always exceptions to the rules, and you, you need to talk to them just a little bit. But for the most part, it's good to know the heartworm status of the dog, especially on an older dog because just a few worms can cause that heart to have some problems and to actually actually malfunction a little bit. Mm, so Not good. All but right. yeah, yeah, it's kind of kind of bad. Hopefully yeah. we're getting into a colder time of year, but what I'll tell people real quick is we keep up the heartworm stuff all year round because there's times where, you know, you'll have a week mm -hmm. in January, uh, not always, but, right. you know, where, where it warm up 40, 50 degrees. So. Better safe than sorry. Absolutely. Our next call is also from Tulsa. It's Hi. Tammy. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. What's your question? Hi, I I got a cat and we mm -hmm. moved across town mm -hmm. and she went need about almost for almost three or four days. Uh huh. Okay, we're thinking about moving to California. Will you think that of her? Do you think she'll make it? Well, I mean, you know, you want to probably, usually a day or two, you know, cats get upset and they'll kind of stop eating for a day or two sometimes. Uh, and But if it's three or four days, you might want to have your cat checked out before you go and just have someone kind of listen to her and look at her, uh, have her weighed, uh, you know, kind of what we call body condition score. Uh, and, and then also kind of mix around a little bit some canned food or even some little Gerber's number one chicken baby food and see if, because if she's really not eating, uh, that kind of concerns me a little bit uh, and and you probably want to have her checked before you go because that could be stressful going all the way across the country. Okay, so, let's squeeze in one more call. It's bet. Kim and Glenpool. Good morning, Kim. What's your question? Yes, good morning. I apologize for my voice. That's, That's okay. All right. but no problem. I have a Yorkie and mm -hmm. have noticed him coughing and wondered if it's possible to transfer a virus or a cold to your pet. Very good. Uh, the answer to that is yes. It's not real common, and I always tell people when I graduated from veterinary school, they said no. Uh, but the answer to that is is yes. There are some things now that they're finding. In fact, they found some some dogs, and they found the flu uh, that was transferred kind of from us to them. Uh, wow. I don't know that it goes backwards so much, uh, but all these little guys are mutating, and so new ones come up all the time. Real quickly, you know, we did not have dog flu until just a few years ago, and it got out of uh, I believe I believe they say horses or pigs, and and got into the dogs. Mm. So, so there's different little viruses that emerge all the time, and and the answer is I think yes. Uh, you know, usually they're mild, but if you're concerned and a lot of coughing, go see your veterinarian because right. some right. of them can get pneumonia and stuff, sure. especially sure. older dogs. So. Got to be careful. Absolutely. All right. Well, Dr. Landers is here every Thursday to answer your pet questions. If you missed any of today's segment, you can go to kjrh.com and click on the lifestyle tab to watch it again. You can also learn about other pets who need homes uh, and more about Heritage Veterinary Hospital as well. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you so much.